Hi guys, how are you? Hi, good, Hi, how are good. you? Doing great to the start. Uh, oh. Obviously, uh, sentient pumpkin is scary, but <clears throat> is there something for you guys, like with Halloween, that if it became sentient and came after you that wasn't a pumpkin, that you would just be like, absolutely not, just kill me now, I don't want to even deal with it? <laughs> good question. That is a great question. Um... My garden hose. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it has nothing can, to do with Halloween. It, it can slither, this yes. It has nothing to do with Halloween. Oh, it has to be a Halloween thing? Oh. You can say a garden house. Oh, you can say anything. Okay. If okay. you want. Okay. It can be, it can be anything. Fine. Change well, the question. <laughs> well, I think it's a cool. scarecrow, but that, maybe that's cliche. Oh. But but uh, we have a collection of, I love Halloween. At our house, we have uh, a collection of scarecrows. And there's like dozens of them, you know, all different ones. And if any of those things started walking around, it'd be. It'd be okay. Perfect. Now, for me, I, I know spiders are alive, but you know the giant ones that people put in their front yards? Mm. Like, if those came to life, I mean, there was like a teeny spider in my car the other day, and I almost drove off the road. So I really think if there were some giant ones, it would be, it would be over for me. That would be my last day here. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I agree. I'd be like, uh, I'm good. You can just kill me now. Yeah, it's fine. yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> fine. life's fine, but I don't need all of this. Yeah. Um, I do think that this movie is, you know, bringing back the kind of 80s horror comedies that we had very much moved away from in recent years, because if it's not gory and serious, then it n normally it gets ignored. When you are bringing that kind of vibe back, what for you both, both on the acting side and the directing side, was the most fun of getting to capture that energy that movies had been missing in recent years? Yeah. To me, it's the, um, it's, I love doing practical in-camera effects. And these days, it's very tempting, especially when you're dealing with a creature, to rely on CGI you know, to, to bring it to life. It's a, lot, it's a lot easier while filming to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, the, the craft of, of uh, practical effects is what I love about making films in the genre. And so the whole entire process, from designing it as a creature in, in ZBrush and then, and then building maquettes for it and then, and then doing tests for it and how to puppeteer it, like, you know, it was really fun. I, I set up a blue screen during the holidays and me and my eight-year-old son, with, uh, with, you know, we, we tested how to puppeteer this creature to make it walk. And it was just him and I, the two of us. And then I, we actually made a walking puppet pumpkin that looked pretty good, convincing enough to do a second test. And the entire process of, of trying to make this thing walk and attack as an actual practical in-camera effect is, is, was kind of like the reason why I wanted to make this movie. Yeah, and Peyton, how, how was it for you kind of bringing back the like comedy horror vibe that, like I said, we, we loved it in the 80s, and then for some reason everyone was like, I don't know, let's be serious for decades. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think it, it was a real challenge for me, especially, you know, growing up in the 2000s, that wasn't really a part of my um, uh, foundation or my introduction into horror films, you know, all the horror films that I grew up watching were the hyper-realistic, very scary, high-tech, straight drama horror films, and so I think the big kind of exciting fun challenge was finding that tonally you know where is it scary where is it funny how can we make it funny without these people seeming like they're trying to be funny you know and 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 kind of walking that line and finding those nuances and going back and watching all of these films that um, Justin recommended and and kind of had as as um, reference films for for our movie um, th that was kind of the process of that of just kind of trying to figure out how to exactly find the right tone because it's hard you know when you feel like you're in danger for your life how do you make a joke and it not seem like absurd you know and 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 then how do you feel really genuinely scared about a pumpkin you know so there were just there were a lot of interesting acting challenges but kind of finding that tone of those horror comedy movies that um that you know used to be so big and popular was was kind of the the fun challenge of it all for me yep the tone yeah. de definitely landing the tone was the biggest challenge from the writing of the script to yeah. to planning everything out and, and executing and the editing the yeah. music every step along the way it's a tonal challenge to because it is a tonal roller coaster too you have heart you've got k crazy kills you've got you've got sort of fantasy elements mm -hmm. and so how do you how do you how does that all come together to, to create one coherent tone yeah that's the challenge yeah. with the genre 
Well, yeah, I was going to ask about inspiration because it does remind me a lot of like the R.L. Stein stories that we used to read for fun mm -hmm. as kids. Because I don't know what we were doing in the 90s, but like the cause that was the whole thing. Like a mask comes to life and takes over your face or like something that wasn't animate isn't anymore. And so for you, uh, Justin, what was like the biggest kind of inspiration tonally? for you when you were kind of writing and into directing? Yeah, tonally the inspiration was films I grew up loving that um, I watched all the time. And it was specifically Tremors and Gremlins and, and The Thing, which isn't, which isn't funny, but the idea of like the really inventive practical effects. So, and then something like Aliens, which had, which had an amazing you know, um, female lead that was just, that was just protecting uh, the, her, the new this other character and, and having having this sort of like emotional story wrapped into it but it was tremors and gremlins and then and then in the early 2000s slither um by james gunn having having a film that 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 blends practical effects with cgi in a way that where it's you don't know what you're looking at um, but it was the films i grew up loving i mean you don't see films like tremors anymore and um when it comes to a, a pumpkin that's attacking people, it just felt like the right, the right sort of inspiration because that movie was made with puppets. Hand, some, of, some of those big, you know, the creatures, the, the, grabo the graboids coming out, they were, those were hand puppets and miniatures and all those reverse photography tricks. It was just, this felt like the right approach for, for Carp, so. Yeah, when I, I could argue that the thing is funny, like when they're all just mm -hmm. testing blood and you're like, this is, this is a wild way to do this. It's because you're all tied together. But yeah. uh, I do want to ask now, Peyton, because I like the idea of like you getting an education, quote unquote, in that kind of genre of horror movies. What for you was the most fun to get to explore when you got the recommendations for Justin before this movie? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, this is high tension's not comedic, mm -hmm. but high tension was the movie I watched and I loved it. Like that was, I, I, I thought it was so cool. I, I told everyone else to go watch it. Um, and so that was the one I, I, I would say like, I loved the most personally, but I watched Tremors. Tremors is super fun. That one helped me kind of understand the tone a little bit better. You know, I watched Aliens, which was so good. Um, so there, there were a lot of fun movies, um, but I think I, I was just trying to get as much of an understanding of the genre um, that I could before <laughs> filming, and even during filming, we would watch some of these movies. So, so yeah, it was it was super fun to get. It, it really was like a, a crash course in in horror comedy. Yeah, and how does it feel for both of you being like having a quote unquote like you have a female lead that's not necessarily a final girl because a final girl is a whole other ball game but you just have a strong female lead in the center of a horror movie how is it like for making that character come to life so completely and like as a realized full person in the way that like a lot of the times we would see male characters in horror movies regardless of where they end up by the end of the movie yeah i mean i think uh, finding strong female characters is at the core of you know what I want to do in my career you know and I've been so lucky and and um, fortunate to have gotten to play a lot of strong female characters in my career thus far and so I think when approaching Kira that was a, a big focus for me is is how does she feel like a whole person you know and even in this kind of ridiculous fun silly what's going on uh, concept that she still feels like a real girl you know that that has fallen in love and has had her heart broken and has all these dreams and aspirations and you know has some uh, family trauma and and a little brother that she's taking care of and there, there are so many uh, fun and interesting pieces to her that that existed in the script to kind of really try to dig into and understand and make sure that she felt like this three-dimensional living breathing human um that i hope people can you know watch and 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 view her as that um so i think this was kind of a fun opportunity to get to create um a strong female character in a very different world than i've ever done it before in yeah I can't wait for everyone to get to see Carved. And thank you guys so much for talking with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks very much. Thank you guys.